In this video, we're going to introduce case theory. And just a reminder, I think I introduced this in like the second or third video I made in the series. Subjects receive nominative case and objects receive accusative case. So nominative is the marker of a subject and accusative is the marker of an object. And we abbreviate them NOM and ACC in all caps. I also introduced uh, SOP neg in the beginning, which may have helped you remember, subject nominative, object accusative, and possessive is the genitive, but we won't really take a look at the possessive. Okay, so what are some examples of nominative subjects? Well, pronouns like I, you, he, she, they. Compare that to objects, which get accusative case, like me, you, him, her, them, but we can see that just regular nouns, they don't make a difference between whether they're nominative or accusative. They appear the same to us. It's only our pronouns that change. So we can say, I, as a subject, love me as an object, but we can't say something like me love I, because our nominative and accusative are mixed up. Okay. So let's motivate movement a little bit more. Let's motivate it with case. So here we have that nominative case is assigned by T. So what do I mean here? Well, T has nominative case and it wants to give case to what's ever in the specifier of TP. So it wants to give nominative case to the thing in DP. So we have our word I, so this is I eat, and it's sitting in the spec VP DP position. So this is an agent. It has agent theta role right now, but it doesn't have case yet. So all this is at this moment is a first person singular pronoun. It needs case. So what does it do to get case? Well, it moves up to spec TP. And now this becomes I. So I is now up in spec TP. And now it can get case. So now it goes, it takes a look at this I in spec TP, and it assigns it nominative case. So this is how it becomes I and not me. So we can't get me eat because me is accusative case, but it's getting nominative case from T. So this is our first thing. This is another motivation for why we have to have movement from spec VP to spec TP with our subjects. It has to get the theta role from the verb and it gets case from the head of T. So how do we get accusative case? Well, accusative case is a sign from the verb and the sister of V gets accusative case. Let's just quickly look at what's happened so far. We have the sentence, he loves her. So he starts out as the specifier of VP to get a theta role from loves. And then in order to get nominative case, it moves up to spec TP where T gives it nominative case. So now this he has nominative case from T. But what about her? So her is the object and her is actually pretty straightforward. Accusative case is on V and it just assigns accusative case to V's sister. So now her has accusative case. And we can say that this case is now licensed by V. We can say nominative case is licensed by T and accusative case is licensed by V. So here's nominative and accusative case. There's also prep case. And this is assigned in DP complements or it's signed to its DP complements by P. So for instance, some verbs are ditransitive and we haven't looked at ditransitive structure yet, but essentially we could say gave a pencil to John. So we said all DPs need case. So John has to get some case and John gets this prepositional case from P that just checks it. And this would appear like it has accusative case. So John gave a pencil to me but it just appears as prep, uh, prep case, prepositional case. Okay, what else is going on here? Well, accusative case is on a verb, so it assigns accusative to the sister of V. And 
I guess it could be said, well, does it assign accusative case to the PP as well? But our PPs don't get case. Only our DPs are the things getting case. Only our determiner phrases or noun phrases are getting case. So accusative case from the verb to the DP pencil, the direct object, and then our indirect object, the DP inside is getting case from the prepositional head to. So this brings us to the case filter hypothesis. And the question is, well, we have theta roles that are now in our trees, which weren't before. We have case that was in our trees that is no longer before. So there's lots of different ways for trees to fail and ungrammatical trees to not succeed in a derivation. And there's two main components. First thing, all DPs must get case. So every DP in our tree must get case. So it must have nominative case, accusative case, prepositional case, or if it's an adjunct, it would get case somehow from one of its adjuncts. Two, if a DP does not get case, then there is a crash. So consider the sentence below, I ate the potatoes, the carrots. Well, I is getting nominative case from T. The potatoes gets accusative case from the verb. And then we have the carrots here, and there's nothing to give a case. So this sentence is not grammatical, and we have a pretty decent explanation why. The first thing is 8 only has two theta roles. So this is the agent, and here we have a theme, the potatoes. So the carrots doesn't get a theta role, but it also doesn't get case. So it can crash because of either reason. So then we can ask our question, why is I killed they ungrammatical? Well, let's take a look at this. So T has nominative case, and it gives it to spec TP. It checks it, makes sure it's the same. So I is nominative, that's okay. I kill they. Well, here we have this third plural they. But kill has accusative case. So when kill gives and checks its case to the DP complement, then it says, wait, this is going to be accusative here which means that this third person plural must be them. Now, I killed they is ungrammatical because if we wanted this hypothetically, so if we want this to be they, then it needs to get nominative case because they is nominative, but it can't get nominative case. There's no way it can get nominative case down there. Therefore, I killed they is ungrammatical. So hopefully this was a very brief introduction to case theory, but for an intermediate syntax course, this is pretty much how you would apply it and what you need. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.